Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts takes viewers behind the scenes at archives, museums, and historic sites. The Richard Nixon Presidential Library in Yorba Linda, California, recently opened a new exhibit about Watergate. Library director Timothy Naftali gave American History TV a tour of the exhibit, which chronicles the events that led up to the break-in at the Watergate offices of the Democratic National Committee on June 17, 1972. Mr. Naftali also discusses the aftermath of the scandal, the resignation of President Nixon on August 9, 1974, and the lasting impact that Watergate made on our system of government. The gallery has really two main sides. On the left is a timeline, and I'll walk you through that, which basically takes you from uh, the starting point that, that I believe is important for understanding Watergate uh, through the president's resignation and uh, his pardon, uh, pardoning by uh, pr President Gerald R. Ford. On the right-hand side, we're focusing on some key themes um, things that we know that the, uh, that the visitors would probably be really interested in knowing more about. Uh, we also have a Watergate Resource Center where you can dip into the oral histories, m many of the oral histories that we conducted in order to build this um, gallery. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, the preparatory work we did. Um, um, I believed, as I, I came here, that it was really important that um, the visitor to the Watergate uh, gallery, learn about Watergate from the people who were there. Um, there's no better way to feel part of history than to connect with those who were important at the time. Um, there are many people alive today who played pivotal roles in the Watergate story. Um, and a number of them have spoken publicly before, some have not. And this was an opportunity for us, first of all, to gather information for, our, for scholars, um, but also to, to give you, the visitor, a chance to hear them speak, whether it's George Schultz or uh, uh, John Dean or uh, members of the House Judiciary Committee uh, at the time of the impeachment inquiry. You now get a chance to listen to them explain to you what mattered at the time and why they did what they did. We also wanted an opportunity to highlight the vast resources of the National Archives. After all, the Nixon Library is the custodian of the famous Nixon tapes, and those really lay out a lot of the detail of uh, Watergate in addition to other important activities of the Nixon administration. And of course, we have documents, lots and lots of documents. It's estimated that the Nixon Library has 42 million documents, plus we have the documents of the Watergate Special Prosecution Force uh, at one of our facilities in Washington, D.C., the National Archives facility in Washington, D.C. So, we wanted all of that material, where relevant, to be accessible to you as you make up your mind about Watergate and its implications. This Watergate exhibit lays out the information for you to see how Watergate was a stress test for our institutions. Watergate reminds us that there were three branches of government. Uh, they're co-equal. The legislative branch, the judicial branch, and of course, the executive branch. They're co-equal. And this was a moment in time when the three we're figuring out their interrelationship and where two of the branches placed limits on one branch. And uh, the Constitution survived and the country moved on. And uh, it's a good lesson for all of us. Um, and it's something that kids should know about. They should know about their rights and they should know that the Constitution is in place to protect them when one of the branches of government oversteps its bounds. Thank you. Extensive samples of Watergate evidence, including documents, oral histories, audio recordings, and vintage television clips, are available to explore online at nixonlibrary.gov.